out of voices of those who refuse to be victims. Hey folks, how you guys doing out there? This is Big Lou and we are here live on Shooting the Shit. Today we have special guest, Toronto Cannon is going to be joining us. And we're going to talk a little bit about everything. Uh, the Chicago way and the New York way and the Florida way. Uh, don't forget that Monday, May 11th, we have Jason Ritchie. And on Friday, May 15th, we got Sean Chambers joining us. Monday, May 18th, I got a very special guest. Big Lou Johnson from the other guys who charge your subscription. We don't here at the Phoenix Radio. And we're just going to talk music, Big Lou and myself. Right now, I'm going to bring in our guest, Mr. Tronzo Cannon, with us. And uh, here we go, folks. Yo. Tronzo, what's going on? What's going on, man? You all right? I'm good, man. Down here in sunny southwest Florida where it's a, a cool 85 degrees today, man. Dig you. Well, it's, it's 43 <laughs> degrees here now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I'm just going to jump at it, man. First, I, I started the station back in 2016. We've been broadcasting now for four years, nonstop music. And uh, when I started broadcasting, I started looking for new music. So I ran across this cat, and he's been a pair, of, uh, a nice shirt that's well tailored, ironed to the T, and a pair of overalls. <laughs> 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 yeah. and, and, and the way he described it, I just became a fan from moment one, and I've been following you, man, ever since. Uh, I have a saying around the station that if uh, Buddy Guy retired tomorrow, there'd be a bunch of guys in line waiting to be crowned. I say Toronto would probably walk right by the ball, pick up the crown, and put it on. I'm the goddamn king. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, You're man. a badass, nice man. Words. Hey, and that's how I truly feel about you. I always joke around. So Toronto's is going to just take that can. I mean, I'm a big Chicago Blues fan. One of my favorites is Lori Bell. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, and I think Lori Bell is loaning, loaning Buddy Guy the crown. Uh, but oh, yeah. to me, he's the king of the streets, man. Right on. But, man, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lori's, a, yeah Lori's a nice dude, man. He's got the history, man. He's a hero of mine, actually, you know? Yeah, so, man. The, him and the, cool. whole, the whole Bell dynasty is amazing. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So, so what's going on, man? How's it? How's this uh, coronavirus treating you up there? Man, as long as the coronavirus leave me alone, we good. <laughs> you're, you're out there on that bus hustling day in and day out, no? Yeah, yeah. It's a thing, man. Um, it's a thing. You know, I'm just, uh, you know, going day by day, being as careful as you can. You know, you don't know what's around you. You know, I got my, I got my mask. You know what I mean? You know, I, I got my <laughs> stuff. You know, um. You know, got my hand sanitizer. I, I got what the what they say do. So, hey. you know, and a couple of prayers. You know, and we see what happened after that. You know, and then the re the rest of it's all the Chicago way, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Hey, I gotta ask you, what first got you into the music business? You were 22 years old when you first picked up the guitar. What made you pick it up at 22? Couldn't play basketball. I hurt my knee. <laughs> <laughs> But I, w I wasn't trying to be like a professional cat or nothing. It was just, you know, form of exercise, a form of, you know, talking, you know, talking, uh, um, you know, trash. You know, I, I don't want to curse. Talking trash with the cats. You know what I mean? Um, so, so, and what inspired you to pick the blues genre? What, who was your inspirations in the blues genre that made you go what? that route? Well, I wanted to play reggae at first. That was my thing when I first picked up the guitar because I was listening to a lot of Bob Marley and a lot of reggae. And I wasn't I wasn't too much in the genres because I grew up around the blues. And uh, so it wasn't a genre to me. It was just something that my, my grandparents played, you know, that I hear in the house. But then when I started going to blues, quote unquote, jams, uh, because, you know, there was no reggae jams, <laughs> you know. And you, you go around, everything was a blues jam. And I hear cats plays like My Babe and and Muddy Water songs. I'm like, oh, that's my, my, my grandparents played that. That's, you know what I mean? That's, that's that song. You know what I mean? I didn't even know who wrote it at the time or who sang it. I just remember the songs. And because, um, again, I used to listen to reggae, listen to um, funk, you know, Shaka Khan and all that stuff and Paul and Funkadelic. 
then I would listen to I'm kind of like a '70s '80s baby. Um, uh, well, I would say baby, but my formative years. Now I listen to stuff like The Police, you know, uh, Blondie, you know, because my brother brought all these records in, you know, Devo, <laughs> stuff wow. like that, you know, along with Ohio players and all that stuff, you know. So, and then you being a DJ, you would know Herb Kent out of Chicago. Yes. Um, he would play something on, I don't know, it was VON or what station it was, but he would do Herb Kent's Punk Out Hour. And it would be like punk music, but, you know, punk music that blacks listen to, right, right. <laughs> you know. So you might hear Band of Gypsies and all that stuff, you know, but you call it the punk out hour, you know. Cool. Yeah, but, I, uh, I, uh, I grew up uh, over a, a little bit further east out in New York City. And we had uh, Chuck Chill Out and Melly Mel and these guys playing that I stuff. Did. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah, yeah. So, uh so I, we were joking around. Actually, you and I were. You made you you shot the you, you shot the fire first with the uh, with the pizza. Hey, I'm a New York and Chicago. <laughs> I we, know. We, I don't know what it is you guys call that piece of bread with some sauce on top and call it pizza, but uh, hey, we'll leave hey. that alone. <laughs> it, it, you know, it takes it takes 45 minutes to cook. You know, we got you got to hang around a little bit to get our pizza. You know what I mean? Yeah, I hear you. I hear it's all good, man. Yeah, hey, I, no, I was uh, I was up in Cleveland this past year, and we went to a little pizza joint. And I told yeah. them, I said, you know, they were taking me out. It wasn't that bad, the stuff out there. So it was all right. I'm still a New York guy. Well, well, well I, I've tried some of your pizza. I played uh, I played a couple of places up in New York a couple of years ago, um, the uh, City Winery. Okay. And I, I walked down to the Electric Lady Land from the, I, I think y'all call it what, Lower Manhattan or something like that. Lower the Manhattan, City winery yes, up sir. There. So I walked down to Electric Lady Land, man, and I, you know, I looked on my little GPS and I was walking, man, because I, I always wanted to see Electric Lady Land, you know, and um, and I and I passed a couple of pizza joints, you know what I mean? I, I back then, you know, I got in, I, I folded it like y'all fold it up, so, turn your yes, head to the side. So, so you experiment and you trade, you tried some real pizza for once, said. Yeah, yeah, it was, <laughs> it, was, it, was it was greasy, but you know, hey. yeah, like I said, I turned my head to the side. I don't know how there you, you do go, it. There you go, man. That's why. That's what they say. Lean back a little bit, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't get a chance to do a dirty water dog, though. They. <laughs> That's what they call it, right? <laughs> yes, sir. That, and then you got the White Castles, the Belly Bobbers. Okay, we got White Castles here, yeah. We we call yeah. them the Suicide Burgers. Oh, man, you got to eat them right on the toilet, man. They oh, go right yeah, through. Yeah, man, right through you. I tell people, the, your, your, your pillow's running away from you the next morning. You got that onion I breath. Know. <laughs> I know. That small but, intestine uh, going to work. That small intestine going to work, baby. <laughs> so you ready for a little football season coming up? You got your berries? Uh, hey. I'm not a sports you know, I'm you a, sports a sports fan, fan when they start winning. When they start, you know? all right, fair weather fan. All right, all right. Yeah. You're, oh, hey, I get on the bandwagon. I can get on the bandwagon. Band. Hey, we all do. We all do. <laughs> uh, what What would be, when you're up on stage, what's your favorite song to perform? Oh, man. Probably John the Conquer Root. Yeah. Uh, That's John the Conquer it developed over the years, man, because it don't sound nothing like the studio recording. And um, the studio recording, I thought I was freaking out, you know what I mean? But the it developed over the years. And, you know, it, of course, your live stuff, you know, is not like your studio stuff. But that's one of the songs that just kind of came into his own at, on the stage, you know? It grew up. Yeah, yeah. You can freak out a little bit more with it, you know? Yeah, no doubt. I, I, I just love your... Uh... Your charisma and your attitude on that stage you, you you definitely own it and your your band is chicago way uh you, i've seen you guys definitely grow into it man and uh oh, yeah. i'm, I'm a, like i said i'm a huge fan uh the what is it, the, the the preacher the player the pimp oh um, yeah that, <laughs> all, that all through stuff all man. three <laughs> uh that's like i i tell folks i'm getting a, i'm getting some ink done on my arm and i'm getting the prayer hands but yeah. he's got a he's got a pinky ring and a blunt in his hands. And I said, well, <laughs> oh, uh, no. I said my right father, my man. father, my father was the righteous guy, which is the yeah. prayer hands, and I was the uh, not so righteous guy. There's the yeah. blunt and the pinky ring, you know. So it's a combination yeah, yeah. of being my dad. It's a mashup. But right um, hey, you got a bunch of fans that are out there watching this right now. They're saying how much they love they love you from Ennis, Texas to Michigan to across the pond. We got Sophie in France right now. Saying what what a great what great artist you are and how much they love you. If you want to say something to your fans, what would you tell your fans, man? 
Hey, thank everybody for, you know, digging my music and what I do and, and how we put it out here in Chicago. And uh, and I hope to see y'all real soon because, uh, we you know, you, you find out in the time and time like this that we need each other. You know what I mean? And um, so we need each other. As much as the fans and the audience need us, we need y'all too because we got stuff to say. You know, we got to get stuff out, you know. So I want to thank you, Big Lou, for being the vehicle too for – for letting me, uh, you know, touch the people that like my music, you know? Well, I figured I started this little podcast because it's a way for all of us to stay relevant with our fans. Um, yeah, yeah. Usually I, I host shows and I MC events and it allows me to have my one-on-one -on -one with the fans also. And and when you guys are up on stage performing, believe it or not, I don't I don't play any instruments. I probably have about 12 guitars. I don't play oh, any thank you. But, my man. Uh, but uh, I... You I, gotta stop I, picking them up now, man. Hey, I've tried, man. I, I'm just tone deaf, finger deaf. I, I'm challenged. I just can't do it, get it done. I've had many guys try and teach me. I don't even know if I'm left-handed or right-handed, to be honest with you. <laughs> just squeeze it until it sounds right. That's all. But, uh, <laughs> but man, I, I tell you, I, I, I'm a huge fan. I know you got some stuff coming up now. You have, uh, uh, I guess, a, a show coming up on virtual in the next couple of days. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh no, no. Actually, no. We're doing something in cell, and we're doing something tonight. Actually, in a couple of hours. Oh, um, it's it's. Uh, I I, I kind of modeled it <laughs> after the Instagram battles with the producers. Okay. You know where you know like Teddy Riley and Babyface did something. You know where they 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 take these famous songs and they put they battle against each other about how they wrote it and the inspiration. So I figured in my mind, because me being the bus driver, all I do is drive and think, right? So, I, you know, I'm like, why can't the blues cats do that? So I'm starting a little thing where it's, uh, and this is the very first one, where me and different uh, guys that write blues, I'm going to go in to battle with them. Not a battle, but, you know. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, De yeah, debate, kind of debate it out. Yeah, yeah, how they write their songs, the inspiration of writing it, you know, what they think about songwriting, and just, and how the music goes, whatever. It's being a um, a lyricist, you know? Okay. So, so I'm just trying that, and it's gonna, I was gonna be on my uh, Facebook tonight, and Selwyn's Facebook live at 7 o'clock Chicago time, and uh, 8 o'clock... Um, Eastern time. Florida time. Uh, what, yes. what, what, what time would Where that be? You, from, uh, Eastern, yeah, Eastern eight? time. We're Eastern. I'm, I'm down in Florida right now. I'm okay, Dan, down, okay. Um, now, you've got, what, five albums under your belt? Six. Six, six albums under your belt. Yeah. yeah. Out of the two six independents, out, two Delmark, and two Alligator. Hey, I'm representing, as you see. I see. I, my man, right on, brother. Hey, uh, I got the wrong hat on. <laughs> <laughs> out of the six albums, which is the one album that really jumps out at you that was, like, your favorite album to record? Oh, man. Uh... Well, I was, well, my independence, I realized I was learning, you know, as far as studio. And and I think I cut my second album too fast. It was original songs, but I think I cut the songs too fast because I was like, I didn't have a producer. I was in it myself, you know what I mean, doing my thing. Mm -hmm. um, the first one was just, I did a bunch of covers and one original. Uh, I, but I started learning the process probably on John the Conquer Root. Even, even my first Delmark release, Leaving Mood. Because I would, I had a um, a co-writer, and we kind of went in together on a couple of songs, and um, that didn't go over too well, <laughs> you know. When you have somebody, uh, I mean, he's a good, a great guy, but uh, that made me that album made me start wanting to write my own music, you know what I mean? Because it's like, you know, I I want to have my own stories interpreted the way I want to interpret it, you know what I mean? So so I kind of learned on my first Delmark release. You know, uh, but I was doing co-writers and I did a Nina Simone song and I covered uh, th three, three or four of other people's songs like in the city, you know, um, that, that didn't get any kind of um, um, recognition. So okay. so that was me trying to, like, pull my friends up, you know what I mean? So they can get some royalty money a little bit, you know. Now, yeah. but, now with yeah. that being said, John the Conqueror, now let's narrow it down one more step. What has been, other than John the Conqueror, which you said was your favorite song to perform, in the studio, which is the one song that you might have recorded that you said, wow, this is this is a, this is a one badass track? Probably Walk It Off. Yeah. Because of the that. story. 
because because of the story. <laughs> yeah. you know? I can see it. That, that's what turned me on was the whole attitude of the song, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that kind of developed too. That was that was a very cool development. Um, you know, um, you know, because again, I'm on the bus, man, all day driving, and I, you know, I'm thinking all these concepts, and I kind of write in a template of uh, Castles Made of Sand, uh, Jimmy Hendrix, where it's four short stories, and the and the chorus is the is the like the things that tie them all together, you know. Okay. So, so walk it off. You know, I, I kind of like writing like that, where you just—it's a quick story, the attention span, or whatever. It's like, okay, you got a beginning and an end. Boom. You know, chorus. Okay, next story. Right, right. <laughs> that kind of thing, probably, you know? That's probably why I love it. I, my wife says I have ADHD, so I can't focus for too long. <laughs> well, <laughs> so well, that's song for me. Hey, I, I hear four songs in three minutes. I, I can dig that. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. But um, I did that actually on my new CD, um, "Preacher, Politician, and Pimp." I did it with. Um, um stop me when i'm lying four, four okay. short stories you know i was just listening to it the second thing i want to say that, is track number two that, that's the one that start. that's like a, a new orleans kind of thing yeah i'm not scared i dig that track a lot oh i'm yeah i'm yeah um actually that that man that that came up uh that was again all true stories of uh things that i see around me you know what i mean this lady used to get on my bus, man, and she, I didn't know for uh, for the couple of months I'd drive that route, I didn't know that she was being abused. And she would be like the first customer on my bus every morning on that particular route. And I asked her how she was doing because she came in kind of mellow one day. And um, she was like, I'm all right. And I, I made a, that I didn't know. I would just say, that, what, you're your boyfriend? Y'all, y'all, I said, y'all having a problem or something like that. You know, just kind of, because we kind of knew each other. Making conversation. Um, conversation yeah because she was always the first customer on the but i knew to wait for because she always be running for the bus you know and she she it was warm she had a t-shirt on and she showed me her shoulder and it was bruised and i was like wow and i remember she always to wear shades and she had like a, a bruise on the gristle of her nose one time but she worked at a daycare so in my mind you know i'm not thinking about people's business you know i'm thinking mm -hmm. maybe a kid or something hit her or something you know and it hurt her you know, the gristle of a nose right around there, you know? And, uh, and I just, the only thing I can come up with was, you know, it's not going to get any better. And, yeah. and that was the beginning of that one song. Um, he laid his hands on me out of anger for the very last time, because I was, I was trying to get some of my friends. I got some high school friends that's in, you know, in the business of, you know, domestic violence and all that stuff. So I, forward a couple of uh the next time i saw her, i gave her a couple of phone numbers to call you know okay. my friends you know from high school that you know that grew up to, to do things like that and after that after I, that route i'd never seen her again you know so i don't know what happened to her but it, it hit me hard because all of the telltale signs her wearing shades all the time right, maybe running right. for the bus all the time and that little bruise that was on her nose you know it started oh. just start coming back and i'm like wow well, hopefully she got the proper help that was needed. You let her there, and uh, and she's off yeah. to better things in life, you know? That's all yeah. we can hope so, for. So, so my stories are, uh, you know, I try to write from a real perspective, man, you know? Well, I'm yeah. sure riding on that bus every day, you are you know, that you're working, you see stories. I've had friends that are bus drivers, and I hear the horror stories that they got. Oh, so, man. Uh, I'm sure that, help, that, that helps to, per, to put your perspective and your stories in line. Oh, um, yeah. What in the business? What has been the biggest problem that you've had to overcome in the music business? Um, you know, hey, I'm I'm a blues man. I don't sometimes. Uh, the biggest problem I have, people that you thought were your friends is not your friends. You know what I mean? It's like that. I I, I could say shit on your on your webcam, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can say whatever you want, man. You know, this is uncensored, that, man. You, you know that that hating shit, man. We're bunch of grown folks. That, that yeah, that 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 hating shit that that really irks me because I help, I try to help other musicians, man. You know, um, I'm not one of them cats that's like, oh, I'm get all this for myself and I'm not gonna share. You know, I've gotten cats on on record labels, man. You know what I mean? To help them out, and then they turn out to be asses, you know. Yeah. But I try not to hold that in my heart. But I'm. Uh, and, you know, I might lose my seat in heaven for this, man, but I, I hold grudges, you know what I mean? Because I don't do nothing to people. I don't do nothing to nobody. I'm a nice guy. You know, I try to be helpful. 
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, if there's a gig somewhere, you know, um, I don't do the scavenger shit with people. And I know there's a lot of musicians, man, they 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 connive. And I don't see this this this, this the thing. You the first one hearing this, uh, bro, big Lou. This you the first one hearing this. I'm not a conniving person, but it's almost like chess. You have to think conniving sometimes to, you know, because you don't know who's trying to connive you. <laughs> you know what I mean? So now that makes you messed up as a person to just want to live life and look out for your friends, what you think of your friends, and live out, you know, with your buddies. But right. that whole conniving shit, man, once I'm done with you, man, I'm done with you. I, I, I If I find yeah. out... I agree. I I have a saying that once I put a cross on you, I'm done. Yeah, I, yeah. Know. What? But my thing is, once I take your phone number out of my phone, we're done. That's it. Yeah. Because I I'm agree. not gonna I, fall back in that hole twice and let you do me twice. Well, yeah. I I, I say that too. I had a conversation with uh, you know, Big Lou from uh oh, yeah. the other the other station, the other guys. Yeah. He yeah, and yeah. I, he, he, we're we're gonna do a show kind of like what you and Saul would are gonna do. He and I are doing the same thing together, an interview together. Mm-hmm. Um, and we had an off the air conversation the other day for, for a lengthy one. And, and, and we said that, that today's musicians, a lot of them are, are very conniving and, and, and I don't think a lot of folks know what blues really is today. And uh, they're calling rock and roll blues because that, there's no <laughs> more rock and roll. And, yeah. uh, and, and the blues genre has really been thinned out. So he was asking me if I go to the, like, to the IBCs or the BMAs and stuff like that. And I said, no, I really don't attend none of that stuff because I'm not into clicks. I'm, I'm the lone wolf. I ride what I ride. I say what I say, and I play what I want to play. If I, I tell musicians, when you send me a CD, if it's got 12 tracks, don't tell me to play three of them because the other nine are not that good. I'm going to play all 12. I'm going to expose you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you should be proud of your shit. You know what I mean? You know, you know, all, you know? I, I, I play, you send me your CD here, I will play your 12 tracks on rotation. Sometime during the day, one of your songs are going to play. Yeah, yeah. Out there. And Dude. I can't pick what minute it is. I'm not going to mm. tell you what song. It's just going to be on rotation. Um, and, and and that's how I do it. We, we have a saying around here where we dare to play the B side. Ah, we don't, we, like we don't cherry pick your CDs around here. I like um, that, and 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 I strongly feel that way because I I'm truly a traditional blues fan. Uh, yeah. As you can tell, Lurie Bell to me is king of the blues. It don't get any more bluesier than Lurie. Oh right man, he, he got that finger, and you know that's the reason why because that's that's another thing too. As far as I, I'm considered a contemporary blues artist, you know, but like. Some of my storylines, I need a couple extra chords. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, right. like 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 John the Conqueror Root ain't nothing but, you know, a freaky kind of like Muddy Waters kind of thing because it's talking about putting the root on somebody. You know what I mean? And and trying to get that love. You yeah, know, because yeah, yeah. <laughs> she ain't she ignoring you. But that's the reason <laughs> why I wrote Insurance, the song Insurance, because very traditional. Um, your songs, and I like playing it live too because it's, you can express yourself better when it's just you and your guitar you know you ain't got a lot of other instrumentation around you but that's the reason why i wrote that uh for the traditional artist to let them know that you can write other blues in that format other than my woman left me you know you know i agree i yeah, I, mean, I, it, I, I think that a lot of guys are getting stuck on the same what you said earlier what you did when you first came out, that you released two albums back to back right away, I think they're pushing out quantity of music, and I say it all the time. It's one of my things that I preach: is there's no timeless music being played today, and they're not putting efforts into the quality of music. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you know, there's no there's no muddy waters out there where 50 years from now the kids are 50 years from now are gonna say, "Wow, this is a badass dude." Yeah. There's very little of that's well, what I'm trying to say. You get yeah, an well, occasional. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I, yeah, I mean, I just, I mean, because blues shouldn't be timeless, you know? I mean, I, I, now, there, there's certain things that I can't touch. I don't know how it feels to drink out of colored water fountains and all that stuff, you know what I mean? And, and you know, I don't know how, segre- well, I'm living in Chicago, so there's a certain amount of segregation, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I was well, like, I, I told you, you, you were, I were online, and I told you the one incident that happened to me, and I'm not going to repeat it on here live, 
Mm-hmm. But that was four or five years ago. True as true as hell. I wow. you know, I looked up I looked up as I'm walking into the door, and that's the first thing I see. Wow. Yeah, it's it's you know, it's the thing. So, but you know, I, I try to write about stuff that, that's around me, you know, and stuff that 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 because like young young people would ask me or their fathers like to bring the young blues men up and say, You have any advice for my son or for my daughter? And I say, Well, write your own songs and get a passport. That's the only thing I got for them. Write your own songs. Get, because, you know, I, I don't really want a 12 year old telling me about uh, all the loving he getting. <laughs> you know, you know, or, 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 you know, I got a sweet little angel. That, that, but BB wasn't talking about no angel, man. I hear you. I hear you. you know? Hey, I, I have a saying that I say is just because you put a fedora on, don't make you a bluesman. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> see these ashy knuckles right here? See? Hey. See, 12 year olds ain't got to work. Look at these ashy knuckles, man. Look at that. That's work now. Look at that. Hey, speaking of blues, today's uh, our bluesman's birthday, Robert Johnson's birthday today. Robert Johnson, right on. You know, hey, I was uh, about Robert Johnson the other day, man. You know that. um. I was wondering if, if Robert wasn't into the uh, voodoo, like the Haitian voodoo, you know what I mean? Like the occult, you know, because if, if you're meeting devil, a devil at the crossroads, that could be what they say, Papa Legba, you know what I mean? How they had a Haitian voodoo thing going yes, and all that yeah. stuff. And, you yeah. know, Papa Legba, he was the voice between God and man, you know? So it's like if you meeting a dude at the crossroads, maybe he was into the the the, the spiritual realm of like you know Haitian voodoo or something. You know, who knows? It's, hey, it's out there. There's good. There's evil. That's all I gotta say about that. Yeah. You know, but but he I, got I truly... that good that fast. They said though. I'm wondering. Hey. You know, hey, I I don't even think he could save me. <laughs> <laughs> no man, ain't no, oh, ain't, no cr- ain't, ain't no crossroad for me, man. You, you so, know why you ain't playing blues, man? You ain't that? never had your heart broken. Oh, come on, man. I can tell you some <laughs> stories, my friend. <laughs> I can tell you some stories, man. You, you, you had your heart broken before? I've had my heart broken before, man. I haven't ripped out okay. of my chest. Well, yeah, you need one string for that, man, to sing, you know? Hey, I, got, I, got, I, I do play that, though. I do play <laughs> I got an old one-string dobro, one-string guitar. I got a tune to go. an open D. And, hey, uh, and, and, but you know the, the, the good thing about that? No matter what you do with that one string and somebody say that ain't blues, they can't tell you that shit because that's your blues there and you that's go. your story. And, you and, know we, what I'm about? And, and we joke around because I'm not a musician at all, but I, I joke around. I've been on stage with uh, anybody that's everybody with my one string guitar. I've jammed with them all pretty much. Uh, I just quit dragging it around because my wife says it sounds like a cat trying to get out of a paper bag. <laughs> But hey, but 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 the beauty of the blues is your story. And, and what I forgot the name. This is DVD called uh, uh, "Can You See Me Cry?" Or, or no, "Do You See Me Laughing?" Or something like that. I forgot the blues man name, but he plays with a spoon. Oh, you know, that's uh, that's uh, Johnny Shines. No, no, that's no, not no, Johnny no. Shines. I'll tell you who it is. He he had polio. He had polio, but that's not Johnny Shine. That's, Johnny uh, Shine hung out with, with no, no, Robert it's not Johnny. Johnny Shine. He's on that movie with R.L. Burnside. Yeah, on uh, YouTube. Yeah. And yeah, he uh, had he had polio, and he so couldn't hold the guitar laughing. anymore. And uh, that's the DVD. I, I, I'll tell you right. I'll tell you right now, real quick. My, my man, it's it, the name of the DVD is called "Do You See Me Laughing?" Because I I play one of his songs on here. It's called Sadell Davis. Okay, dig, dig. Now, dig this. Some people will sit back and say, oh, I don't like that. He's, he's out of tune. He's that. How can we sit back and tell another man, and that's his song and his story, how to play the blues? Dave, yep, yep. To- Sundell, Sundell Davis didn't tune his guitar. He didn't play rhythm. He, he couldn't. He didn't. He didn't. He he was all off beat. He, but, 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 but. but 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 the story, but dig this though, Honey Boy Edwards. We did a documentary that was never finished, and I got one of his picks, Honey Boy okay. Edwards. Okay, we did a documentary from a cat. Uh, it, it, it wasn't finished. We talking about probably fifteen years ago, wow. 15, 15, 16 years ago. We was up late at night at a, a bowling alley. That's where they shot everything and all that stuff. Anyway, 
uh, we was at a radio station and uh, WDCB, if I'm not mistaken. Now, there's a college radio station around here. And he asked me to tune his guitar. And I'm like, okay, cool. You know, Honey Boy Edwards, you know, he tuned his guitar 440. He took it and detuned it the way he wanted <laughs> and tuned it back down to what he wanted to hear. And I was like, that my man, you know, hey, yeah, everything, we tell him. yeah, everything ain't 440. You know what yeah. I mean? As far as what we want to hear. Cause to me, sometimes it's the story. It's the story that hits That's, me uh, more than, than what I'm hearing musically. I, uh, I was writing through this whole virus thing. I was sitting out one night, I couldn't sleep and I was writing some, some lyrics to a song and, uh, Early more early next morning, my wife wakes me up, and she's I'm, I fell asleep in my little studio. And she goes, "Are you all right?" I said, "Why?" She goes, "Are you okay?" I'm like mentally. I said, "Yeah, I'm fine." She goes, this, <laughs> "These lyrics sound like you were trying to commit suicide," oh, and I no. was right. And now, what it was to me was a song about somebody that was stuck in purgatory. Oh wow! And hey, hey, hey don't say too much, man. I don't want to hear no good stories because I've been wrote a song about it, man. But tell yeah, me. I, I, Hey, it, it's up your sleeve, man. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna complete it. I'm gonna get it to you. Stuck in purgatory. Yeah, man. It, it's, it's a cool ass, it's a cool ass vibe. It's, it's hmm. uh. But anyway, yeah, I, I like to write a lot of songs. I like to write. Yeah, yeah. I, just, I just can't. I can't. I'm not musically gifted. My brother was one that was musically gifted in life, and unfortunately, I just lost him. Hmm, but so um, yeah, I just have no talent. I, I can pick a song. I can tell you if a song is good. I can tell you if a song is no good. But I can't yeah. play it. I can spin some records for you. <laughs> oh man! But, but you know, uh, I mean, but it, it goes to that we all got as far as the, the preservation or whatever the blues and the blues genre and the movement. You know, everybody's got their part. You doing your thing. I'm doing my thing. The audience doing their thing. You know what I mean? Spreading the word. You know, it's everybody just got a a a, a part in the game. You know yes. what I mean? Now, do you, think, do you do you think how long do you think it's gonna take to get back to normal? Man, I was supposed to been uh, I was supposed to be doing the East Coast tour in June, and now every place now is talking about see you next year. So the the, the summer um, the summer gigs are pretty much dried up now, man. That's yeah, it. I, th I think that we were talking about. I I use this venue sometimes that holds about five hundred people. Mm. And we were talking about maybe putting the, just to help them out. I'm not looking to make anything just to help a musician, local musicians doing six feet, six chairs, six feet apart. And, uh, but I just, I don't know if I would really want to be known as the guy who put a show together and people got sick at it. Yeah, I, I know. Just, I like to see, see this go pass by first, you know, but, but see, that's part of the, 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 the shell shock or the, the gunshot thing where, you know, I'm looking at old pictures, you know, how Facebook do the uh, memories of what happened mm -hmm. last year. And you see yourself in these big crowds, man, and you walk in. Because I do the wireless. I walk through the audience. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. You know, and take pictures with people. I ain't shy, man. I, hey, what's up? Hey. You know? Well, yeah, that's that's part of what you do, what you love, yeah. you know. Uh, my last show my last show that I did was with Walter Trout. I did mm -hmm. an event with Walter Trout down here. And he walked in. It was March 12th, the, the show. And his first word to me was, Lou, he puts his hands up because I'm not signing anything and I don't want to be talking to anybody. And, wow. And but I can I can understand he's a, he's a he's a transplant recipient. He had a, yeah, he's I, got, I, yeah. I, I was even surprised that he was here to do the show. Yeah. And after yeah. that, everything after after that show, everything got canceled. You know, after the show he came out, he you know, we we chit chatted for a few minutes. He apologized. And it was that his wife wanted him back home. He didn't she didn't want him to be compromised. But, yeah, uh, not too. That, that, it it's, it's, it's a real it's thing. Yeah, it's the real thing, exactly. Um, if you could change one thing in the industry, man, what would you change? Blues get its proper place as far as the, the, the creation of all American music, which, you know, again, the Grammys, we should get, we should, I mean, every award, music award show, you know, American Music Awards, the, the you know, AMAs, whatever they call it, the, the Grammys. You get your, we get our proper due when it comes to uh, this music, and, and and as far as or respect, I should say, the rappers, you know, uh, the the pop artists, the you know, I mean, we should we we should get our respect. You know what I mean? 
Um, I agree. Yeah, I mean, it's just, and it's not a monetary thing, too. I mean, of course, it's ultimately a monetary thing. But as far as the creation of the music, you got to respect where, if people respect the traditions of, you know, America or just respect the traditions of their genre, then they should be um, uh, thoughtful enough to say, well, okay, who influenced the person that I'm, that I like singing? Like, you know, oh, okay, I like Whitney Houston, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, she liked, you know, gospel singers. She liked Aretha Franklin. Okay, well, well Aretha Franklin like who? Who did she listen to? Okay, that was yeah. Pierre Sam Cooke, blah, blah, blah. And ultimately, it's going to go back to somewhere in the blues, a blues genre. person. I agree. You know, a, a big mama Thornton uh, or, uh, or uh, uh, Bessie Smith or my, uh, uh, um, you know what I mean? It's going to go back to somebody blues, no matter what genre you, you I, I think the to. best the best thing that happened for the blues this year was that whole BMA thing having to be done virtual because people that normally didn't know about it or didn't even go to it were able to experience it, some of it. Yeah, yeah. And, and but, it's just a, a, a genre that, you know, you, you, you win rock and roll player of the year, you win rap artist of the year, you win pop artist of the year, video of the year, and then say, oh, by the way, Gary Clark Jr. won Blues Contemporary Guy of the Year on, on them. You know, it's like yeah. by the, a by the way award. Yeah, well, and they, and and I don't like this for years. It's never televised, no. you know. And it's yeah. like, you know, which is a form of uh, it's almost like voter suppression. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? It's I like say, why, I say you put even put it on PBS, man. Put it somewhere on TV. Yeah, yeah. Why can't you celebrate? Because it should be. I know what they say. What was the thing that year when Martin Scorsese came out and. Uh, did like it was, I think that was the year of the blues back in two thousand five or something like that, when he came out with that those documentaries, okay. Martin Scorsese. Mm -hmm. um, it's like ten different parts or something. Um, you know, it's the Grammys, the AMAs. I don't know who can change it. I don't know what you do. Uh, but. It's it's got to be a thing where you look back and say, if it wasn't for this particular genre, none of us would be sitting in this audience. You know what I mean? And it takes somebody big, like a Rolling Stones or somebody that. But I mean, you know, I mean, everybody know they blues based, and then they did their thing and what they did for Howlin' Wolf. Everybody know I'm well, of everybody didn't know the blues or whatever. All right, right. But but it takes somebody to get on that board of the Grammys or whatever, who's running to say, you know, we got to give proper respect to blues arts and people that's actually out here doing it, still doing it. You know what I mean? You know, no doubt, um, man. I, I have the utmost respect for these guys that are traveling from city to city, setting up in one bar, going to the next bar playing. And I think, and I, and I was saying that earlier also was that I think that all these little bars that are, bringing in these musicians are, 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 are kind of watering it down a little bit because it's taken away. Like like you said, you go to Europe and you have all these big uh, theaters that are doing the blues shows and you have 800 people, 1,000 people there quiet listening yeah. to it and you finish your set, you bow, and then they all stand up and give you a roar and ovation because yeah. they appreciate I, the music. Th there's been some, you know, like in Chicago, a lot, a lot, of, a lot of us... Um, and I, you know, sometimes I guess you take for granted because we can roll out of the bed and there's a blues bar open at to 3.30 in the morning or 2.30 or 1.30. When you go to Europe, it's an event. You know what I mean? When people tell me they've driven three hours to come see me, that's like, wow. You know, uh-oh. <laughs> Who put that up there? <laughs> well, it's, uh, Sophie in France, she put that up there. I just put oh, it up there. I did. I did. <laughs> But, but uh, uh, I mean, people people drive three hours to come see a blues show in Europe, you know, and and then maybe some, not three hours, but you know, people travel a lot too, like small towns that we might go to, to come see some blues, like Chicago. Sometimes or bigger cities, we might take it for granted, you know what I mean? Uh, which is not a good thing, you know. Um, I didn't play Chicago as much when I would when I got with Alligator Records, um, because there was a, of course, I was exposed. Uh, thank you, Intrepid Artist, Rick Booth, for uh, exposing me to a wider audience, you know. Uh, Bruce Iglauer, he would tell me, I would say, well, well you know, I'm on Del Mar, so that's a historical label. I figured people that like blues 
would know that I'm out here. That's, and Chicago is a hub of blues. So that means, you know, in my mind, people would say, well, okay, let's, what's the best thing coming out of Chicago now or the bigger cities? What's the best thing coming out of Florida, coming out of New York, blues-wise, that kind of thing. And Bruce was saying, you're not known yet. And I'm like, but I was on Del Mar, you know, that kind of thing. I'm like, I was nominated for BMA. I mean, and lo and behold, when I got with Intrepid, when I got with Alligator, I was going to these different towns, even Florida. I mean, everywhere, Michigan, just, you know, Dallas, you know, um, we did Texas. People at the end of the show will say, who are you? Like, like, where did you come from? And I'm like, Chicago. I'm like, I thought me being, a, a, again, a, 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 a Chicago guy, people would kind of check these hubs, you know? And I'm always, of course, you know, I'm, I'm never too far from my stars. You know what I mean? My Chicago <laughs> stars. You know what I mean? Hey, okay, I'm sorry, that's a New York. Yeah, hey, you know good. what I mean? Hey, 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 oh, hey, oh, hey. <laughs> yeah, I, I did. A, I did a show. I did a show with John Primer down here of all people. Oh, and, I did. And to yeah, me, Primer, dude. John, John to me is a, is a blues god. You dude, know, the history. I shook his hand and I said, "Hey, listen, I'm not trying to stalk you here, but I'm going to try and take in some of that history with you." You know? Yes, because and, you. And 35, yes. 35, 40 people show up to see him. And it's almost but, embarrassing. You know what I mean? As yeah, fan, I mean, I'm like, well, this place should be it's, packed. It's, um, you know, I mean, I don't know how you would change that other than, you know, I don't know how you would change that, man. It, it's, I'm doing my part on the Chicago end. That's why some people say, oh, well, you know, you, you got a hook or whatever. Well, no, I'm just proud to be from Chicago. So I'm proud of, of the history. It's here. And everybody should be proud for where they come from. You know, if you're a New York-based blues man, if you're a Florida-based blues man, you Memphis, be proud of where you come from. I just happen to be, you know, be born in Chicago. And then I've noticed the history around me after I got older. And I, I felt a little, a little messed up where it's like, damn, I didn't know all of this. Like, you know, of course they don't teach you in school. I just knew it from my uncles and my grandparents. And I live... I lived two blocks from a famous club, Teresa's, and didn't even know it was wow. famous. I just knew my, my uncles went down there. But like you just said, in the schools, that's where it should start, the music classes in the I schools. Mean, because a lot it, of the youth, a lot of the, you go to these concerts, and I'm sure you're in these events and you're at festivals. There's no young folks out there. Shout out to Billy Branch. Been doing it for over 30 years, blues in schools. Yes. If I'm not mistaken, he's very instrumental in the whole program in blues and schools, you know, because he was, he's doing it for years. And I did, I did a couple with Dave Herrero uh, one time and Felix. Um, um, I did it with, with them a, uh, a bunch of years back where we did a blues and schools thing, but Billy Branch, I think, and I, you can check the history on it as far as Chicago. He's the one that kind of brought it from what I know. I could be wrong. He's the one that's, that's kind of like the, the head of the blues and schools in Chicago that I know of, you know. And so shout out to Billy Branch, you know. Well, I, I will uh, let you end it with uh, this. Um, if you want to say something to your fans, anything you got going on, anything coming up that you want them to watch, working to get your merchandise. Um, oh, uh, you know, Toronto Cannon, y'all know me. Uh, um, Alligator Records, so you can... Um, you know, uh, I, I got a bunch of CDs sitting in my room right now. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so I'll even see y'all some CDs, you know, TorontoCanon.com. Uh, just punch my name in. I'm the only Toronto, uh, you know, but there's nine actually on Facebook, nine Torontos. I'm the oldest Toronto. Yeah, it, it's an Italian last name I found out too. Okay. Um, David Toronto, he's a um, uh, jazz dude. And okay. I'm like... It's, there's a whole Toronto family I don't know about. But anyway, yeah, just Alligator Records, TorontoCanon.com. And, and, um, and you'll be on Selwyn's page tonight, or is it on your page? It's on my page, but he's going to share it, and we're going to do this live stream thing on Facebook. Okay. And uh, I'm writing new songs. Um, I'm looking forward to the next album, even though this last album came out in September. You know, it's, it's still a baby. You know, I haven't had a, a proper chance to really uh, cool. expose it. So... I'm going to start doing some acoustic things uh, to kind of so the songs can, you know, breathe a little bit more, kind of make it an unplugged kind of okay. thing. You know what I mean? 
So whenever you and, do uh, one of those acoustic things, reach out to me, man, and I'll pinch into your video and we'll share it for you. To, um, yeah, right on, right on. Fan. Um, I want to thank you for your time. I want to really thank you for stopping by and spending some time with us. I know you just finished working. You, you got to get <laughs> home. You got to go home and set up for the next show. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And we'll be tuning into that. Um, cool. I appreciate you. Stay I appreciate safe, you my, back, man. Thank you. Stay safe, my brother. And uh, next time we'll have to share a slice of New York style pizza together. Hey, that's right. Hey, man. And if you ever in Chicago, man, the pizza is on me. The deep dish on me, brother. And I'm going to sit there <laughs> like this. I'm gonna, you better eat it all, too. Nah, I'm it. It's hey. expensive, man. You know what I'm saying? That pizza I pizza be $40, man. Hey. <laughs> all right, brother. Be safe, man. Be good. Be, Take care. Peace, peace out. Y'all be cool. All right. All right. Be good, right. man. There you go, folks. Toronto Cannon spending some time with us here on the Phoenix. Oh, uh, uh, shooting the shit with Big Lou from the Phoenix Radio and uh, doing it the Chicago way. Let them know that New York style pizza is still way better. <laughs> uh, tune in on uh, Monday at five o'clock. I have Jason Ritchie, and uh, you know Jason Ritchie's uh, out there. He'll be blowing some harmonica for you guys, and uh, we'll have a good time with Jason. That's Monday at uh, five o'clock here on Big Loser Station. But thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Shooting the Shit. You guys behave, stay safe, and have a good weekend.